Hi guys, I am the Vampire Jack Tennyson, and I am a real life living vampire. You're probably sitting there right now asking yourself, Vampires? Are they really real? I believe in witches, and I believe in ghosts and demons. But vampires? Well, I have an answer for you. Not in the way that you've been taught. When you hear vampire, you think about Count Dracula, the deep widow's peak, and a Romanian accent, and a cape. But no, we are not the fictitious characters of Bram Stoker's novel. We existed long, long, long before Vlad the Tepish was ever re-characterized into the vampire Dracula. Now, there are some similarities, but there are many, many, many more differences. For example, garlic. Can we enter a house without invitation? Holy water, crucifixes, and vervain. Are any of these things legitimate? No! I love garlic on pizza, and pasta, and garlic bread. <laughs> Ooh, garlic bread is so good. And I can walk into a church without bursting at the flames. What this is, is more of a spiritual journey. A religion. Or for many, including myself, an other kin experience. Other kin, by the way, is the belief that your soul is inhuman. That your soul is not exactly human in nature. That isn't the entire shared experience of the vampire community, however. It is a very specific subsect of it. Some would say it was the original subsect of it. But that's debatable. Now, what is it to be a real-life living vampire? What is it to be like us? I can tell you my experience because I can't tell you anyone else's. We are not all the same. There are many different types of us. So, me trying to explain someone else's experience wouldn't be accurate or correct. So I can tell you mine. My experience as a real-life living vampire is that I have a necessity for external chronic energy. Yes, I do notice a difference when I don't get enough. Yes, <laughs> it is a benefit as well. It's somewhere down the middle, because if somebody was to say, I feel like I'm deficient, I feel like I'm deficient in this, you can easily just say, well, you have a mental disorder. I have gone to therapy. I have seen a psychiatrist and been evaluated. There's nothing in this mentally or physically health, physical health-wise that really says anything about a necessity for energy or a reason why I'd be feeling the way that I feel. But for me, I will notice lots of things happen. I'll notice I have issues carrying myself. I'll notice I have kind of like a very strange ache in my gums, in my stomach, in my body actually overall. And there's nothing medically scientific that can really explain these things. A vampire is someone who requires or benefits from external pranic energy who uses this energy to sustain themselves or to feel whole. Some of us talk about a strange irritability to sunlight. Some of us talk about a darker nature, more of a primal or instinctual sort of self. And others have clairaudience, clairvoyance, and other psychic abilities and psychic gifts. How does one become a real life living vampire? Is it the same like the movies? Is there some dark embrace, dark kiss in the middle of the night? No. No, it is not like that at all. There are always debates on the ability to turn people, humans, into vampires. There are many different viewpoints throughout the community. Really, in my opinion, it depends on what path you're a part of and what you uh, subscribe to. But in my opinion, this is my opinion, I don't believe you can. I believe that there is being what you are, and then there's wish fulfillment. For me, 
I awakened when I was a kid. This has been my life. I've lived this for a very long time. Started when I was very young. I didn't know what was going on because I had no way of getting any information. And then when I was in high school, I started researching and learning more about this. Over time, I started getting more books, finding more sources, web pages, forums, and doing some more historical digging and found that this is a, was a very real possibility. Not everyone's experience is going to be like that though. In the community, there are other real life living vampires called latent awakened. That means that you awaken later in life. It's more akin to a spiritual awakening. You suddenly realize what you are and the entire world changes. You start to realize that you are not normal and you do not feel human. And over time, no matter where that path leads, it's not something that you can really ever run from. It always finds you. And that was my experience as well. So this leads me to why am I talking about this? Why am I going to be making this a series? Because it's my experience. Because in my life, I was made to feel that I could not share this, that I could not talk about this. Not only was I not made to feel like I could, but I was also very afraid to. Like many of the vampire community and those who feel the same way that I do, we stay silent. We stay isolated because we fear persecution. But with so many different communi communities, Wiccan, witches, and otherwise, on the rise, I feel like it's time to reopen the conversation, to visit it again. What type of vampires are there? Can you tell us a bit about them? There are a lot of different types of vampires. That would be a very, very long video. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take three of the vampires that I know very, very well, and I'm going to explain them briefly. For starters, we have the Strigoi, the Sabretooth clan, led by Father Sebastian, who you may have heard of, the writer of the Black Veils, the Sanguinomicon, vampire magic. They believe that energy is not a deficiency. They believe that feeding off of energy is a boon and a benefit. They also employ the immortal-minded philosophy as well as they are practitioners of chaos magic. They believe in living now, in embracing all things rock and roll. Then there are the vampires of House Kepper, the psychic vampires, like Michelle Belanche, the writer of the Psychic Vampire Codex, or the Vampire Codex. These are vampires who believe that this is an energetic deficiency, that this is, that there is a wound to the subtle body, and that it must be healed by, through feeding. These vampires also believe in psychic magic and energy magic, which are akin to the energetic practices of Reiki. And then you have Accessionism, or the Accession Bible by Luis Marquez. More of an other kin look at vampirism, stating that our spirituality derives from ancient Egypt. This is the path that I most actually subscribe to. Can you tell if someone is a vampire? Yes. It's called the beacon. It is an energetic signature that we all have. Is it a perfect thing? Like, if someone is unawakened, can you perfectly hone in on them and understand exactly what's going on and what they are and yada yada? No, it's not how it works. The way it works is that if I'm in person or in a conversation with someone, I can usually pick up on that energetic signature and what it would feel like, at least what I've noticed, it feels like I've known them forever. It feels like there is this kind of pulse that goes through my subtle body. It's happened a lot of times, but there's also times where someone has said that they were a vampire, or a real life vampire, where I haven't gotten the beacon. So thank you for joining me on this brief look into what a real life living vampire is, and my amendments to being one. We're going to make this a series, and on the next one we'll cover feeding. What that includes, what that looks like, 
myths and the realities. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you guys next time.